Hello, everyone. My name is Gino Barbaro, and I am host of the 100 Year Podcast, where we dive into personal financial engineering through utilizing the dual asset strategy. Today's guest is John Shettelhelm, the CEO of Eagle Financial Solutions and 100 Year Specialist. He's helped thousands of clients grow their wealth, reduce their taxes, who doesn't like that, and work toward their dreams of financial security. Please join me in welcoming John Shettelhelm to the show. Hey, John. Hey, Gino. Thanks for having me. We're going to have a nice conversation today, really about retirement income. Let's crush some of those limiting beliefs that people have. Let's shed some light on possibly some better ways of doing it. And we're going to go about the pros and the cons. We're going to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right, John? Sure. Sounds good. So let's discuss what's a traditional way that people come to you. You've been doing this for decades since 19, early 1990s. Per, traditional per comes in. How do they traditionally want to save for retirement? Traditional way is with most people, if they're working for a publicly held corporation, 401ks are the benefit that is offered when somebody goes in and starts day one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been around for many decades now, but even the, uh, the co-founders believes that it's actually not great now. And what it's become was not what its intention was way back when. It sounds as if the government had its way in it because always intentions are always wonderful and they're magical. But when it comes to actual execution, it doesn't seem as if it's always a good thing. And for those conspiracy people out there, I think of looking back 30, 40 years ago, the government created this great scheme for Wall Street to get your money, to be able to have to put money into 401k. You're putting money to a 401k. You're deferring your taxes early on. Taxes are going to rise, we know, in the future. Now you're creating people putting money into the system and at the same time pulling it out. So you're creating supply and demand there. So don't call me a conspiracy person, John, but that, that's the way I see it. What are your thoughts? No, I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. I mean, I always tell people it's like, it's ironic. Some people think a 401k plan, oh, it's really good. And I'm like, okay, so it's good. You put money into it. And then when you need money, you can't get to it. And even if you could get to it, the government's going to penalize you an extra 10% on top of the income tax you're going to have to pay anyway. So I tell people, it's like, it doesn't really feel like it's our money when you have those strings attached. That's, that's a great point. And I'd like to just share something that I shared with my wife a little while ago, and, and she really understood the mindset of wealthy people. We are trained as middle class to save for an event. That, that's what it comes down to. You're saving for college. You're saving for your kids' weddings. Ironically, I have six kids, a lot of weddings coming up. You're saving for retirement. I always told my wife what I was taught as an entrepreneur, as a wealthy investor, save to buy an asset. That asset in turn will pay for the events. Our very first deal we bought over a decade ago. And all of a sudden that deal has paid for my first child's college education. She's graduated, she's a missionary up in Tiger, she's doing great. Now my second child is up to bat. And guess what? That very first asset is still paying for college and it's appreciated in value. The principal is getting paid down by the residents and all of my kids are going to go through college from that one asset. And when we're talking about the dual asset strategy and whole life insurance, you're able to borrow money from your whole life policy to buy these assets. So you're not just saving for the event, you're saving for the opportunity to buy assets that will pay for those events. And my wife, God bless her, amazing person, hates real estate. When I explained it to her like that, she goes, Gino, why aren't you buying more real estate? So thanks, Joel. Thanks for giving me the uh, the okay to go buy it. But John, let's talk about some better ways to you know to save for retirement. So you know when we're talking about the dual asset strategy, and if you just compare it to like the four hundred one k, which a lot of people have, the first thing I'll tell people is like, let's pretend you're a farmer, even at its basic core level, and I'll say you have your seed in your hand, which is very small. You're going to plant it, and it's going to mature, and it's going to grow, and it's going to become this huge, bountiful harvest. And I'll ask the question, where would you rather pay your tax? on the seed, which is small, or on the harvest, which is much larger. Now, everybody I've ever asked that to, thousands of people, they always say, well, on the seed. And I'll say, well, when you put money in your 401k, where are you paying it? And they're like, on the harvest. So not only are we tying our money up, but we're also discounting the fact that we're gonna pay a lot of taxes in the future on that money without even thinking about it. Whereas with the dual asset strategy, using the whole life insurance, that money is paying tax now, tax-free later, but more importantly, it's liquid along the way. So you're mentioning weddings and things like that. So you can use it for your real estate deals, weddings, anything you can think of that you're gonna need in life along the way. That is an amazing concept, everybody. The, the picture that I just got from that, my dad used to be a farmer, 
came from Italy. He hated it. Problem with farming. You have a great crop. All of a sudden that hails. He's like, Gino, I'm sick of doing this. So he comes to America. And, and the amazing thing, John, that that's such a vivid picture. You're planting the seed. Well, how much does it cost to plant the seed today? It may take a lot longer for that seed to grow and have that bountiful harvest. But I know a lot of wealthy individuals who have two and three and $4 million in their 401k. It grew tax deferred. But now 30 to 40% of that money off the top is gone. And you don't think about that when you're young because you can't see 30 and 40 years ahead into the future. It's very difficult for you to imagine that. But picture and imagine having the seed, having that money today and saying, I'm going to pay on it today, but I'm going to let this thing grow and I'm going to be able to utilize the money. More important, the opportunity cost that you have as that money is growing, you can do so much more than having money in a 401k growing at three or 4% once you take away all those fees and everything else. Let's talk about some of the pros, other pros of whole life insurance. I mean, there are so many pros to it. And people don't typically think about utilizing it as retirement income. It's liquid. You know, first and foremost, for many business owners, it can be credit approved just depending on what state you live in. You know, so we've used it for emergencies for folks. You know, right now with the markets falling, a lot of people are nervous. But my clients that or our clients that have the life insurance, they have access to that money. It's not tied to the markets. So it's very stable. It's very predictable. It's easier to plan for. If you don't know where things are going, like the risky assets, this helps balance out your portfolio because you can see it's predictable. That's why it's why the uh, the banks own so much life insurance on their own books is because of that, because it is stable. It is secure. It's one of the safest assets out there. I'm writing all these notes down, John. I got to recap for everybody because sometimes things are, seem too good to be true or we're, we're going to get to the cons because there are obviously with every pro in situation when you're putting money into an asset, there are always cons to it. It's liquid, everybody. Number one, we're using it as a cash management strategy. If I have a short run where I need to buy equipment or I need to get payroll done or I need some kind of expense, it's there. Pull that out of your 401k, you take a 10% penalty plus any fees on selling any kind of stocks or bonds or whatever you have in your 401k. Credit approved. It's stable. These companies have been around, specially designed mutual life insurance companies. They've been, they've been around for over 150 years. They've never missed a dividend payment, the companies that we work with. It's predictable. Who doesn't like predictability sometimes in our lives, especially when we're planning for something 20, 30 years out? And what I like about it, it's also credit protected bankruptcy. A lot of states allow you to have that money if you, if you, if you come around and all of a sudden, something happens, you get, you get a bankruptcy or somebody comes after you, it's safe in there. And one thing, John, can we talk about also the provisional income? Once you start pulling money out of your whole life as you're retired, it doesn't go against provisional income and social security, does it? No, it doesn't. And that's a, that's a huge thing going on right now, especially in light of they're talking about changing the rules on social security again. And I tell people like the way that they're going to mess with benefits is they're going to look at your tax return. And if you have income, so that'd be a 401k or an IRA and you're taking income or pension and they're looking at it, it's like, well, you make, you're making a good living. You're doing just fine. They can mess with the social security benefits because it's on your tax return. Uh, same with Medicare premiums. They look at how much you make and your Medicare premiums are determined by how much you make. So if I'm taking money out of my life insurance policy tax-free and it's a policy loan, the difference is I'm not going to pay it back, okay? And then the death benefit when I die that goes tax-free to my family, that is not reported on a tax return. So it does not affect Social Security and it does not affect Medicare premiums. I think everyone listening to this should go back and, and is there personally financially engineering their plan? Does that make sense for you? When you get older, are you expecting to get social security? I'm hoping that I do. At the same time, if that doesn't go onto my tax return and it's money that I can pull out, I can borrow. And then when my, I pass away, it goes to my heirs tax free. That is huge right there, everybody. And amazing. What I'd like to say, let's talk about the cons though. There are a couple of things. I'll mention one right off the bat. It takes a few years for policy to get going. It really does. You're not going to get money in and start making tons of money on day one. But I'll challenge everybody out there. Who has ever started a business? Have you started a business and made money on day one? If you have, you're one of the few and God bless you. It's amazing. But it normally takes time for a business to get going. And then guess what? If you want to become really successful and scale up, you need to reinvest in the business. So it's one of those things where, you know, whole life does take a few years to start churning and burning. I've owned the policy for over 20 years. And I'll tell you right now, that policy is returning double what my initial premium was, and it is cranking out there. I can sleep at night. I don't have to worry about it. I've got the death benefit. If I need to borrow that money today, it's liquid. John, let's go over the, the cons of, of working with whole life. Yeah, so I agree with you there. Like if you're working with a business owner, it takes a little bit of time to get ramped up, but it's not as slow as people think it is. 
if you revert, revert back to your 401k, for most people, how liquid is your 401k to begin with? Can you get to it? It can't. It's tied up until age 59 and a half. So I challenge people that are doing the 401k that the life insurance is way more liquid than the 401k is. For the business owner, it's the mindset of, you're right, it takes a little bit of time to get cranked up, but we've had clients use it in as little as six months. So it depends on what your resources are and your income to fund it. But some of our clients have been able to use it very quickly. John, before we sign off, do you have any, I don't want to call them horror stories, but stories about your clients who are nearing retirement. And then all of a sudden, I know 2008 seems like it was an attorney to go. We have plenty of those stories. Do you have any of those stories? Even now where the market's down 10% year over year, people have money in crypto, Bitcoin's down 50% as we speak right now. If you put money in Bitcoin and you're expecting to retire in the next three months, you're down 50%. I mean, that, that affects your retirement. You may have to work another couple more years. You may have to put more money into those plans. Do you have any stories about any clients who have really had challenging, challenging <laughs> struggles trying to retire from, from not having money, in, let's say, in a whole life policy? Yeah, so the, the, the old thinking is, is kind of this. If, if you have money in the market and that's all you know, do you know what the safe withdrawal rate is when you go to retire? So you got this pile of money, it's grown, and now you're ready to retire and you need income. Do you know what the withdrawal rate that you can take out safely that it can last your lifetime? It's 3%. So you got a million dollars. And I say, Gino, you can take out $30,000 a year. First of all, how do you feel about that if I, if I told you that? 30,000. I'd start crying right now, John, because I'd be like, million dollars and I can only touch 30 grand. That does not seem fair right now. 30 grand, six kids, that's really going to scratch the surface, my friend. Right. So a lot of people think in their mind, a million dollars, I should be able to take much more out than $30,000 a year. But what people are not accounting for is the volatility or the losses in the market and the longevity that many of us enjoy today, people are living longer. So those two things keep it at 3% because most of us want our money to last. We don't want it to run out. And the biggest fear that people have is running out of income or money. When we balance the life insurance with the risk of the maybe let's say the stock market or even real estate, you might have some down years, but if you're balanced, many times we can double the payout to like 50, 60, $70,000 a year of income just by being more balanced. And the life insurance is the balancing tool. I love that. So you touched upon the barbell strategy off camera. You want to tell the folks what the barbell strategy is and how it really relates to the conversation we're having? Yeah. So the barbell strategy, um, you know, thanks to Rick Sapio, he, he brought it to the forefront and, you know, I used to lift weights. So, you know, those weights have to be balanced on both ends. Otherwise you got a real problem. So on the right side, you can have your risk assets. And if you're all risky, you're top heavy, right? You know, so we got a problem there. If we're balanced, we need something that's safe. That's not tied to the markets, not tied to the real estate, not tied to the stock market and whatnot. So the life insurance is that balanced portfolio that gives us much more stability and predictability. So think of this, if the market is down and you need income, that is the worst time to be selling, right? Mm -hmm. We take the life insurance to use it in those years where the market's down, real estate's down, stock market's down. That's when we use the life insurance. By doing that, we allow the growth assets to come back in value. If we're just taking from the asset that's down, we're going to run out of money so much quicker. But by having that asset that is uncorrelated, we take it from here. And then when this comes back, then we can take it back here. But the two work in tandem and we can get so much more retirement income by it working together. So many people think it's either this or that. And I'm like, no, it's both. I love that. I really never thought about that, actually utilizing it in the down years when your stock market portfolio is doing bad. And then maybe when the when the years are down, you have money in your life insurance. Maybe you go out and buy those stocks. You borrow, borrow from the cash value from the whole life policy, buy the stocks. And then all of a sudden, the stock market goes back, sell the stocks at a profit, pay off your loan, and you have double asset. You have a double dual asset there. What are your thoughts, John? So in 2008, when that happened, that was the last big time people lost a lot of money in the market. I have money in life insurance. So the market tanked. I took money out of my policy and I went and bought stocks and companies that were very inexpensive. You know, if you like, if you like them at the prices they were here, 
you definitely should like them if they're on sale, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in the market and that's where your dollars are, you can't because that's your whole asset base just went down. You don't have anything that's safe and outside of that. That's what the life insurance does. So it's opportunities that you will find, but you have to have something like the life insurance in order to take advantage of it. I love that. And Jake and I, we utilize it in our Jake and Gina community, utilize it for buying multifamily. So it's the same idea. If you have money and you're using cash management, you have money in a savings account. Well, don't keep the money in the bank, put the money into a whole life policy. You're able to borrow 80 to 90% of that day one when you, if they structure it properly, go out, buy yourself a multifamily property, real estate, let that real estate cash flow. This continues to compound uninterrupted. So you're making money on the policy, but you have a loan, pay back that loan with the cash flow from the real estate. And then bam, once you pay back that loan, you have two assets left over. And if it's a down market and you have your savings in, in the whole life, you're buying real estate at a discount, paying that loan back. And then when the real estate elevates again, you can sell that. So I think the safety, the security, the, the ability to have a tax-free, the ability for it to compound, I, I think that whole barbell strategy makes, makes great sense to me. John, anything else before we, we uh, sign off? No, we covered a lot of ground in a short period of time, so... Well, and that's the thing. If, if you guys are out there thinking about, you know, whole life, is it right for me? Is it not right for me? I've been honored to podcast and interview uh, tons of guests. I will tell you anyone with a 10 figure net worth or more, they, every single one without fail has whole life in their part of their personal financial engineering, part of their plan. My goal is to get it to anyone who has a five and six figure net worth. I want them to see how important it is. Because if you want to become wealthy, you have to start doing things that wealthy people do. And one of it is personally, financially engineering their life, their plan, and what they want their outcome to look like. And really, if you see behind me, it is the 100 year real estate investor. It's all about the long term. We're not here to tell you you're going to get rich in the next two, three years by buying it the whole life. That's not going to happen, but you're going to be planning yourself for the future. You're going to be, you're going to be able to actually plan, like, like John said, with that predictability, with that planning, and then be able to leave a legacy for your family all at the same time. John, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. And anybody out there, if you want more questions on the topic or you want to speak to a 100-year advisor, just go out to 100year.com, or even better, go to dualassetstrategy.com and book a call with the members. John, would love to get on the call with you and just discuss whole life. So thanks, John. I want to appreciate you for being on. And until next time, have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Gina. I appreciate it.